Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here, and we are back with another Pioneer deck tech. And today we're gonna to be talking about Golgari Caves in Pioneer. This is a very spicy list um, that I brewed here recently. So obviously everybody knows about all the new cave cards uh, that have come out in the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. There's a ton of cave synergies cards that, you know, obviously care about caves. Obviously there's a ton of new lands that are caves. And although there's uh, caves of you know, cave synergies of all different colors, I ultimately decided to just play Golgari, and it'll kind of make more sense once we kind of hop into the deck here. So, as always, before we hop into the video, let me know at the end of the video, what do you think about the list? Do you like it? Do you hate it? What would you change? Is there any cave synergy cards that I forgot to include? Just let me know in the comment section below. So, caves, this is a very, very fun list to build here. So, we'll kind of hop into the first slide here. So, this is what I would call the meat of the deck here. So, we're playing four Glimpse of the Core, Four Gargantuan Leech and three Cosmium Confluence. Uh, these are cards that care about caves quite a bit. So, Glimpse the Core, search your life for a basic forest card, put it out of the battlefield tapped, then shuffle, or return target cave card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So, Glimpse the Core is a very cool card because it's a rampant growth, uh, which we haven't seen one of those in standard in a very long time. And it's technically the first one that's in Pioneer as well because, you know, we don't have like Farseek or even rampant growth itself. Um, so what's nice about it is we can just grab a basic forest if we want to, but we also do have some cave synergies in terms of, you know, filling up the graveyard and then we can also just return a cave from the graveyard to the Battle of the Tap, which is pretty unique, which is also essentially kind of a rampant growth too because it just goes right into play as well. So if we have caves in the yard, Card, um which early game is nice because you know we ramp ourselves but late game it's nice because spoiler alert if we play any of our uh common caves that discover we can just go ahead and grab it right back we can put it back into play and then we can do it again the next turn which is pretty sweet so definitely a big fan of glimpse the core uh gargantuan leech is a very very cool card as well this kind of for me it kind of reminds me of like gurmag angler it's like the gurmag angler for this deck seven and a black five five lifelink costs one less to cast for each cave you control in each cave card in your graveyard and it's a leech too which is one of the best creature types in the game for sure uh, just a really good body i mean five five lifelink it's pretty hard to beat that card overall so definitely a big fan of gargantuan leech and then cosmium confluence um one of the new it's kind of like our promise but for gates we can search your life for a cave card put on the battlefield tap, put three one one counters on a cave, and it becomes a zero zero elemental creature with haste, or destroy target enchantment, and we can choose three modes and choose the same more than once. So, I mean, realistically, if we're like put on pressure, we can just say put nine one one counters on a cave and attack for nine with that cave, which is pretty sweet. So definitely a big fan of Cosmium Confluence. Card just kind of does a little bit of everything, but it is a five drop, so we're only playing three of those. You know, I'm not playing the full four copies of that so these are kind of the main cave synergy cards let's talk about the rest of the deck so um the oh actually i forgot to include spelunking <laughs> so spelunking is the other cave card that we're playing in the deck uh three mana when it enters draw a card then you may put a land card from your hand out of the battlefield if you put a cave out of the battlefield this way you gain four life which spoiler alert we're playing a ton of caves so we're going to gain four life pretty much every time and then lanes you control enter the battlefield untapped so any cave which most of our caves do come into play tapped any cave that we play after spelunking uh comes into play untapped which is pretty sweet so definitely a big fan of this card a lot of people are exploring with this card uh in pioneer and modern as well i i know i've seen some lists like the gate decks that play spelunking uh which is nice i mean when your lands come into play untapped they're basically just like original duels which is fantastic so definitely a big fan of spelunking and then grizzly salvage is great for two reasons because one obviously it fills up our graveyard which is great with the leech as well as the glimpse card that lets us ramp because we can also just grab a cave that we milled we can put it back into play um but we can grab a creature or land card and it puts the rest in into the graveyard which reveals five which is pretty sweet so definitely a big fan of grizzly salvage one of the best uh ways to essentially just fill your graveyard which is pretty sweet um when i originally was playing multiple colors uh in this deck i was playing Seder wayfinder but then when i switched to golgari i just said yeah we might as well just play grizzly salvage it's just pretty much better and it's an instant speed yeah you don't get the creature but you also reveal five cards which is pretty sweet so all right so our next slide here is obviously some pretty staple golgari cards golgari mid-range cards we're playing four mosswood dread knight two glissa sunslayer and three shieldred the apocalypse so Kind of a disclaimer, and we'll talk about this more in the budget options part of the video, which is at the very end. You don't have to play Shieldred for this deck to function. It's just Shieldred's just really good. There's a reason why it's a $70 card, um, just because it sees play in every single format that it's legal in. So you don't, uh, the Shieldred's are not required. If you wanted to play like another Cosmium, that's fine. 
if you wanted to play like Vraska Golgari Queen, uh, really just any solid black green or black green four drop for the most part is more than enough. You don't need the shielders. It's definitely not for sure a card that you need to play. Just had to throw that in there. So um, last couple slides here is, well, actually the last slide for our main board is really just some of our removal. We're playing four Fatal Push and four Ritual of Soot. Uh, Fatal Push, obviously one of the best uh, removal spells in the entire format. And then Ritual Soot is just a very, very good board wipe. Um, so funny enough, when I was building this deck too, um, I was playing the um, deals damage to creatures based on the number of caves you control, which is originally why i was playing a, a, a board wipe but then i kind of decided you know like we're a really slow deck why don't we just go ahead and just play the ritual of soot um i'm just a big fan of this card in the main board it destroys a number of different aggro decks in the metagame um slows the board down a little bit helps us ramp out get a bunch of caves get a whole bunch more value and then eventually we'll just kind of take over the game so ritual of soot is definitely a huge help for getting our game plan forward just because early creatures are, are going to beat us up so definitely having the ritual soot is pretty huge in the deck overall so that's our entire main board and we still have to talk about the lands here which the lands is actually really funny so obviously we're playing a bunch of caves because we are a cave deck so we're currently playing four hidden necropolis and three hidden nursery uh the fantastic common lands where we can discover four with them which is great for late game just because obviously we just just cascade four which is essentially the same thing but technically better which is nice so we can hit a shieldred a glissa we can hit anything even if we hit the glimpse card um so that goes into the yard and then we can just buy it back and do it again which is pretty sweet so definitely a big fan of that synergy and then we're also playing one besage you it's not a cave but it doesn't matter the card is just that good obviously if you don't have a besage you not 100 percent necessary you can even just put in the fourth hidden nursery that's perfectly fine but obviously we're a golgari deck so we are playing the one besage you uh our next slide here is the rest of our caves that we're playing. We're playing four Forgotten Monument, which is pretty solid overall. It turns the rest of our lands into mana confluence, so that way, you know, if we only have the green cave, we need black mana and vice versa. We can just pay one life and activate that, which is pretty sweet. We're also playing four Sunken Citadels. Definitely a big fan of this, because uh, obviously we choose a color, so it's kind of like a dual land. It's like a... I look at it... I look at it as like a pathway that enters tapped um and then obviously we can use the two mana to spend it only to activate abilities of land sources which obviously we can do all of our different caves to help discover and we can also do it with cavernous maw we get a, we get our own special man land we can tap two and make it a three three elemental creature but we can only activate it if the if the number of other caves you control plus the number of cave cards in your graveyard is three or greater, which is not going to be hard for us to do at all. Uh, I mean, spending two mana to get a 3-3 three, three land is an extremely good rate. Uh, sorry, not a 3-3 three, three land, a 3-3 three, three creature. Um, it's an extremely good rate. Kind of reminds me of, oh, what's the one? Uh, Treetop Village from back in the day, for those who know what that card does. So, uh, And then our last side here for our lands is three forests and two swamps. Uh, I chose the cool uh, Lost Caverns of Ixalan, like the cave part of the you know the cave art lands which i know i featured the other ones before and these ones look very cool what's also really awesome about this deck for those who didn't notice we're not really we're not playing overgrown tombs we're not playing like blooming marshes we're not playing anything like that so our land base is extremely cheap which is fantastic i think the only rare land besides besaju is the um the sunken citadel i'm pretty sure that's the only uh, rare land that's actually in the entire deck so i had to include that in there as well so a couple things we still have to talk about we still have to talk about uh sideboarding as well as some budget options so sideboarding is really really simple we're a golgari mid-range deck essentially slash ramp kind of um so graveyard hate obviously torment script is the best option but if you wanted to play like soul guide lantern as well as scavenging ooze those are both fantastic we're going to want some extra removal cards like Rave Enfeeblement and Assassin's Trophy, Abrupt Decay. Those are all fantastic. Necromentia is great against the combo decks. It's also really good against the decks, uh, the Explorer decks that are really floating around in the format right now. So we can name like Eldritch Evolution or Quintorius Cond. Uh, we get those out of their deck. They essentially, they they can't really win, especially the Quintorius Cond deck. Like the uh, the Teamer deck, yeah, they can just play Trump and Carnosaurs and try to, you know, grind out the game that way. But the Quintorius Cond deck, if we get out the Quintorius Cons, they have nothing else going on. They really don't have any other win conditions. So that's why we're playing a couple of those. As well as some Thoughtseize. We're a black mid-range deck, so obviously we're playing Thoughtseize. 
I ultimately decided to not put it in the main board just because with our lands, it could be a little bit awkward. So that's ultimately why I decided to put it in the sideboard. But if you want to play in the main board, it's still perfectly fine too. And if you want to check out my exact sideboard, the deck list is in the description below for those who want to go ahead and check that out. So last thing we got to talk about is our budget options. It's really, really simple overall. Cut Shieldred is kind of the main one. You could also um, put Duress in over Thoughtseize, but ultimately Shieldred is the bulk of the entire deck. If you just cut the Shieldreds and just put in, you know, a random four drop, the deck's only around $130, which is extremely cheap. Again, because of our dual lands are... I mean, they're essentially, we're not even actually playing a ton of duels for the most part in a way, but all the caves are commons and uncommons from a standard set that was just printed. So overall, our lands are extremely cheap, which I think is great with this deck because if you want to play a Golgari midrange deck, but you don't want to spend like all the money on the Shieldreds and the Thought Seasons and stuff like that, you kind of have like an alternate cool option because caves, caves are cool. Obviously they're new uh, and I think there's definitely a lot of design space for caves. I don't know if we're going to be getting any caves anytime soon for the most part, but still it's very cool. They gave us a lot of fantastic caves uh, in Lost Caverns of Ixalan. So, all right, that's the end of the video. I'd like to thank everybody for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about the list. Is there any card um, that I forgot to include? What would you... What would your list look like if you were going to play like three, four, five color caves? Because you definitely have the opportunity to do that. So just let me know in the comment section below what your list would look like if you were going to build that. So I'm Commander Crane. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.